Hiya. Um, so in this uh, video, we're going to look at an ex uh, example of expected value, in particular one where we're looking at, um, no, actually, yeah, we're just going to look at an expected value problem. Uh, and we're going to kind of see when, how indicator functions actually make our life um, easier um, and why it's kind of beneficial rather than looking at the actual definition all the time. Now, remember the indicator functions mainly work um, when we're just summing over particular things, right? So you have to be careful a little, um, but it can be a little, it can be nice. So let's look at this. So say we have a binomial distribution. Okay. So here I have uh, a binomial distribution. We have 20, we draw a card 20 times with a replacement. Uh, and we're always looking for the ace of hearts. Um, so here, I guess I didn't say this should be a 52 deck of cards. Uh, since I'm saying ace of hearts, hopefully that's a little um, clear. And the question we're asking here is what is the expected number of successes? How many times will I succeed uh, on average? So I do this 20 times. What should my expected no value to be? Okay. So here, since each time I'm replacing the card, um, they're all going to be independent trials, right? Because each time they're always going to be shuffled. Um, each one is not dependent on the previous one. So I know that P is equal to one over 52 for all of the different trials. Uh, so that's one thing I know right off the bat. Uh, so what's the probability that X is equal to X? Um, in other words, that um, I get one, one, one time I succeed or five times I succeed, right? X is the number of times I succeed. Number of times I succeed. Uh, we normally saw this um, as x is equal to k in previous kind of things. Here we're using x, so just note. So this x is really going to come from the expected value, that's why I'm using this x. So here, since this is binomial, we just use the binomial distribution. So it's 20, 20 choose x because we're doing this 20 times. Uh, 50, uh, probability is 1 over 52. We do this x times. And then everything else gives me... Um, 51 over 52, right? Um, and so then if I want to calculate the expected value, the good old traditional way, uh, so here we'll do x equals, uh, I guess, 0, because we could get 0, um, all the way up to 20. Um, x, p of x um, equals x. I guess here I'll do all x, and then I'll do the thingy on the next one, all x. So this is equal to the sum of x is equal to 0 to 20 x times, well, now I have a formula for p of x is equal to x. So I do 20 choose x, 1 over 52 to the x, and 51 over 52 to the 20 minus x. So you could solve this. This is nasty. Like, this is disgusting, right? Like, I don't want to solve this problem. This, I know. I don't even know if a calculator would be able to solve this problem. I'm not dealing with this. Um, so what can we do with this instead? Well, let's think of this indicator function from before. Um, so what I'm going to say is, okay, well, let's see how often, so we're going to look at this problem in a slightly different way. Um, we're going to look at, okay, um, if I, um, do 20 trials, if one of them is successful, I can say, okay, we'll make X I, uh, to be one if I th trial is successful. Um, and here we have to remember that the probabilities are all the same. It's equal to 1 over 52. Uh, and then xi is equal to 0 if not. So if uh, not true. Right? So what do we do What uh, for indicator functions? Uh, what we end up having is, okay, so this x in this case is just the sum over all these indicator functions, right? So I can just sum over all of these. This we saw is just the sum of each one. And here we saw each one of these is just the probability that this thing occurs. So this is just P plus P plus P. So this is just equal to P N times P, which is just 20 times one over 52, which is significantly more uh, nice. So this, if you, 
go down is equal to 5 thirteenths. That is much, 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 much easier to do, right? Um, I don't want to calculate this. This makes me sad. This, on the other hand, it makes me happy, right? You have to think about this, right? This is not, um, you have to think whether you can do this, can you not do this, how this kind of works. Um, but this is obviously like a much nicer way to kind of approach this problem. Um, let's look at a second uh, problem uh, that looks a little different, but is kind of going to be a very similar approach. Um, so, okay, uh, let's try this. So here we're going to right off the bat try and do a uh, indicator problem um, and see if that works. So here we're drawing five cards from a deck of 52 cards and we end up with X number of twos. So here we're told what our um, distribution is basically, right? Where it said X or our random variable is X. And the question is, what is the expected number? What is the expected number of twos among the five cards? So I pull five cards. How many twos do I have? So we can break this up into expected values. So I can say xi um, is going to be equal to the ith card um, is a two. And here you can kind of see that x is just xi. Uh, I guess I should put uh, is equal to one. One, if ith card is a two. Uh, so here I just can sum up over all of the x, x's, right? So x1 plus x2 plus x3 plus x4 plus x5. Let me kind of see um, in an example how this works. Um, so say I have five cards. This one's a three, this is a two, this is a four, this is a two, and this is a king. Um, so here I should have x is equal to 2, right? Since I have a 2 here and a 2 here, right? What's x1? x1 is saying what it, whether this one is a 2. So we have x1 is equal to 0. In this case, we have x2 is equal to 1. In this case, we have x3 is equal to 0. x4 is equal to 1. And x5 is equal to 0. So if we add these up, we get 0 plus 1 plus 0 plus 1 plus 0, which is 2. And that's where this kind of formula of x is equal to x1 plus x2, etc. to x5 is coming from. Okay? So in other words, what I can do is expect the value of e to the x is just the sum of all of these. I can just add all of these up. And each one is going to just be the sum of each one. Okay, nice. Now we have to figure out the sum of each one. Uh, the nice thing is that in this case, the sum of each one um, is all identical. These are all the probability of 4 over 52. Uh, and I'll show in a minute why this is true um, for the 2 case, uh, and the rest kind of fall naturally from there. Uh, so here we basically get 5 times 4 over 52. So 20 over 52, which is 13, which is 5 over 13. So we get a 5 out of 13 chance. Um, okay, so where, where are these kind of numbers coming from? Because I kind of went over this quick. Let's look at this one, x1, x2, right? Uh, and we want to say, what's the probability that x2 is equal to um, 1, right? Um, so what's the probability that x2 is equal to 1? In other words, that's the second card. So this says second card is a 2. So this is equal to the probability that x2 is equal to 1 and x0, x1 is a 2. So I either pull a 2 and then a 2 or I pull um, a 0. I mean, I pull something that's not a 2, and then I pull a 2, right? So these are the kind of two ways. Um, sorry, this should be and, right? Because I'm saying both of these occur, right? This and this. Okay, so if I have these, um, I'm just going to have to multiply these together, right? So I have um, x2 is equal to 1, um, given that x1 is equal to 1, times the probability that x1 is equal to 1, plus x2 is equal to 1, 
um, given that x1 is equal to 0 times x1 is equal to 0. I'll do a little line here. I'm almost out of room. I'm sorry. Uh, so here we can plug these in. So here, um, if I pull, if I pulled a two out, there's one less two. So I have a three out of 51 chance times this one is a four out of 52 chance, right? Uh, pulling the first card being a two and then the second card being a two, right? Uh, so this is first card being a two. First card, two and second card, two. This one is first card not two, second card is a two. So if the first card is not a two, that gives me 48 out of 52, because it's not a two. And the second card is a two, which means there's four cards left out of 51. Um, so here you can kind of see I have the four and the four here. So I'm gonna bring out the four. I'll bring the 52 and the 52 over. Um, so I get 4 out of 52. Then I'm left with 3 uh, plus 48 um, over 51. And here you'll notice 3 plus 48 is equal to 51. And so this cancels into 1. So we get is equal to 4 out of 52. So doing this for the other ones, um, you get a very similar thing. Um, and so that's why this kind of works out and it's kind of nice. Um, now, alternatively, if we really wanted, we could have also calculated this um, by the actual definition, right? So if I looked at the actual definition, well, what's the actual definition? Um, I have P, uh, so expected value of X. So here's actual definition. The expected value of X is equal to the sum of all X. X times P of X is equal to X. So here I can either have 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, or 5, no, or 4, that's it. 0, 1, 2, 3, or 4 twos. I can't have more than 4 twos because there's only 4 twos in a deck. So x is going from 0 to 4, x, and then p of x is equal to x. So how do I, what is this one, right? Um, so this one, if you think about, this is sampling without replacement. So this is sampling without replacement. Sampling without replacement. Uh, so here, if you remember, this one had the formula R, R, uh, N minus R, N minus R over N, N. So here, what do we have? Um, we have R is equal to four because we have four red, four twos, twos. N is equal to 52, because there's 52 cards. Um, I'm pulling X twos out, so little r is equal to X, because I'm pulling X twos, pulled. Um, and then N is going to be five, because I have, I'm pulling five cards in total, total. Five cards. And so this, I just need to plug into my formula. And so I get X is equal to zero to the four X times uh, four R is equal to X. Uh, N minus R is a 52 minus four. So it's 48 uh, and then N minus R. So we get five minus X divided by 52 choose five. Um, so this is what this is equal to. Notice how this again is very nasty. You could technically solve this. You can do this. The first term is very easy. X times zero is just zero. So the first term is nothing. There's only four terms. It's not too bad. But the above way we did it is much nicer, right? It's uh, you can do this by hand. The top thing I can do by hand. This bottom thing I'm required to use a calculator or it's gonna take a little more work to kind of do things and it's easier to make mistakes, etc. So a lot of times when we're looking at these things, try and think, okay, can I use an indicator function? Can I not use an indicator function? And hopefully that kind of helps um, you figure things out. Um, so that's it for this video. Uh, the other videos are basically going to be just um, um, an example midterm one. Uh, so that'll hopefully help you all uh, do well in the first midterm. So I will see you in those videos.
Uh, have a good rest of your week um, and good luck on your exams. Bye.